So, it's Chris, Lead Your Games. Are you interested in dungeon crawlers? Did you like the other video that I did comparing the various dungeon crawlers? Let's talk, as it nears the very end, Chronicles of Drunagor. Drunagor! 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 I feel like Drunagor, as a side note, is like a perfect name for like a heavy metal band. Or like, party on Wayne, party on Garth, Drunagor! I mean, seriously? I mean, right though, right? So the question with Chronicles of Drunagor at this point is, what do you need to know? Is it right for you? Who is it right for? Who should avoid it? How good is it? Now, again, they sent me a copy and I'm going to be doing a full review of it, but I clearly have not had time to get it up before the end of the campaign. But I wanted to give just some information, some yeses, some noes, some preferences, just based on what I know about it what I've gotten through so far in terms of my own side of things, but then also just some thoughts about the campaign in general and what is a little bit of guidance, I guess, if you will, pros, cons, everything else in between. So if you're interested in this, I, again, I'll be putting out my review as soon as I get more of it played, but this is going to be, okay, if you're looking at backing this, if you're thinking about backing this, what do you need to know about the game, the gameplay, the campaign, and whether or not it's right for you. So let's dig into that a little bit. So let's go straight to the pages. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of history just so you know what you're getting yourself into and you're getting to see a little bit of the differences with the first Kickstarter campaign and now the GameFound campaign. I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly because I know you guys like brief and to the point and I'm gonna try not to ramble too much. So Creative Game Studio did this and this is the original campaign. It funded over half a million dollars, which again, for a new property, for a dungeon crawl that people really hadn't heard of at that point with a market that is relatively saturated, let's be honest, that, that's really pretty good. And then it started getting to backers and then people started seeing, okay, wait, this is something, you know, really interested in. Hey, this is something that people are liking. This is something that people are really engaging with because they're, they're bringing something new. And as you've ever heard me say on Kickstarter or crowdfunding, heck, even retail, why am I getting your game over somebody else's? And they, they really brought their own side of things to that. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's talk about the pledge levels because price is the elephant in the room with this one. Now, not in the first one, but in the second one, because they are having all of the increased costs that, I mean, you know, production costs have gone swell up with all the COVID stuff, not just shipping. So the base pledge with Chronicles of, you know, Drunagor was $99. The expansions bundle gets you the two expansions was $170. And then the Black Friday deal, which got you some of the custom like dice and a monster pack, 232 the all in which included the create your own dungeon and a little bit of the other stuff, the superfluous like non-gameplay stuff was 269. And okay, you can be in the story for that and you can be a hero. Okay, great. It funded in 2019. And so when people started getting it earlier in this year, people really started to take note. And of note, I mean, it has to be quality because you're not seeing it. And this is one of the best gauges I use to know how good a game is sometimes. And this is going to sound weird, and but it's a pretty good gauge. How often does it show up in the secondary market? Not what is the price on the secondary market, because that's not always the best indicator, but how often, and the problem is you don't see it showing up on the much in the secondary market. You don't see people getting rid of it um, or flipping it like they are Ankh right now. People are just, you know, with Simon, they just bought it and are flipping Ankh or trying to flip Ankh. And that's a whole nother conversation too. But there's a whole lot of stuff with this. And the big thing was you have this darkness that is your enemy and it is a cooperative linked campaign scenarios with a 3d element and this darkness rules that is going to be the big set it apart in both those ways and the value was really good at this pledge let's not let's not kid ourselves they did a great job pricing this now again i'm not one that gets all the other stuff so i mean it, it would have been an easy pass for me but i remember seeing this and i, I remember going ah and so you know i i that's okay you know, can't get everything, can't get everything uh, when you're paying out of your own pocket. It just doesn't happen. And so the artwork is fantastic. Um, and it sounds like, uh, you know, the gameplay is really holding up. And this would have been my preferred pledge level right here. The two expansions, um, because that's 
really, you know, where the meat of it is. And because if I've heard anything of the people who've played it, I mean, a little bit more goes a long way in this game in terms of some of the enemies and some of the heroes and some of that. So a little bit more from that side of things. But even this, I mean, you're talking 170, you're talking, you know, a decently high price point, and you're getting all of this stuff. Again, the stuff on these campaigns is never the issue. But this is the other thing that I just mentioned. What's unique? Okay, game trays. The These are the 3D elements to add more of an immersive where you don't have a lot of that other 3D element. Now, we're going to see it in Descent, the new version, the 3.0. Let's not kid ourselves again. The 3.0 version of Descent. But attacking from the high ground. Insert Star Wars meme here. But that is essentially one of the things. And so doors are... A big thing too because what happens is there's you know it, dungeons are assembled differently each time you open one of these doors and each monster that you're gonna be drawing is drawn randomly from that too so it's going to be different in that sense and this action cube system again is something unique that we have not seen in other games and so it's bringing new stuff the darkness uh, hunts down the heroes weakens them powers up the monsters again sort of what massive darkness should have been more of period. We'll see with Massive Dark Tricks 2. Again, that's a different conversation. And then all of the other stuff, the funding, the stretch goals, the unlocks, all of that other stuff. Now, that's great and all. Okay. But now we get to this campaign and now we are literally over three times the amount. Now, this is not representative because they have also gone and this is the uh, other topic of conversation right now is this easy pay. And so with this easy pay, they're basically allowing you to set up their own system to do installed payments, you know, because if you're looking on the left side here where you can see a little bit, the all in for this new stuff is 270. The reprint is 340. Now, again, the two expansions, the core box and the stretch goals, but you're getting all of the other stuff too. The question is how much of the other stuff do you need? I mean, it's a reprint of everything. It's a lot of money. But there's a lot of people going in on this because they're, like I said, they're already at 1.6 at the time of me filming this three times their previous goal and knew that was going to happen with, like I said, the judgment based on what you're seeing on the secondary market is a very good indicator sometimes of how the tide is turning, shifting, going. Now, again, this is one of those where, you know, a gameplay all in for all of the new stuff, including the reprint and the new stuff here. 410 again it's it's a lot of money i mean this is like i talked about in other videos the price point for these is going up 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 if you're getting everything 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 570 dollars and this is more reminiscent of storm sunder with their all-in price and those these have really been the two that have really been almost heads and shoulders the only thing i can even think that's come recently close is some of those other ones like monster hunter with the all-ins and all the other stuff and even like the simon x-men united with that, with the Marvel United X-Men, um, because of all the add-ons there. But even then, I think you're talking like 300 something, not five. I mean, this is the price of two other all-ins. And so that's what you have to think of. Is this game right for you? Because this is a game that scales much better than a lot of other dungeon crawlers. It just does. With a lot of other dungeon crawlers, you have to have four people. You know, I just reviewed earlier in the week, um, Lords of Vala, Dragon Bond. You play with four people, whether it's AI or not. With this, this is one of the few rare dungeon crawlers where you can scale it to how many you want. So if you only want to control one hero, which is, they say, pretty hard, actually. But if you even want to control one or two, you can do that. And it has more of the latest iterations of zombie side side of things, as opposed to the avant-garde, uh, you know, I'm just going to go in there and do whatever I want and consequences aren't going to be as much because as long as one person survives, we win. This is one person dies and you lose. So it has different stakes. Now, this is not as expansive as some of those others are. I mean, that was the complaint with Wild Ascent too, right? That the it was very streamlined. It was very linked. Now, this has much better of a storyline than the original Wild Ascent. How is it going to compare to Levon Rising? I think, um, you know, again, if people have played the first half of this, people have been pretty happy with it. And if it holds up to the first half, I think people are going to continue to be pretty happy. Again, it's just a, how do things scale on the bad guy side of things? Does it scale as easily? Are you going to be able to have an easier playtime with 
four people as opposed to three or two or one, even though that's people or heroes that you're controlling. And again, on the other side of this, how much of this stuff do you need? Like when you see all of these expansions, when you see all of these add-ons, for example, here's the apocalypse. This is the new stuff. This is the new one that's really adding a ton that people say, okay, this is going to make the better game better. And it's going to fix some of the issues that were in the first one. And the other thing I, I haven't even pointed out is that you can get it with just these standees for these, you know, major bosses for the horsemen of the apocalypse so that you don't have to buy the miniatures. They've gone the awakened realms walk, which again, if you've heard me talk before, I give you props. If you're doing that, where you offer some of those big miniatures, not as you have to get them, which jacks up the price point on your sort of content locking. You've made it standees so that if you want those superfluous miniatures, you can get them. You can pay the price. You can have the awesome table presence, but if you don't want them, you're not paying, you know, God Zooks for them. So I like that. And that's what this is talking about. The God Zooks, you know, I mean, in these things look, freaking sweet i mean that thing is massive a mother and i'd love to have them on my table but i'm not sure also i can afford 90 dollars for that again the hero packs i've heard some things where some of the heroes um you know some of these heroes are cool and they wish that some of these were included so this is the sort of optional thing that do you need more how many more are you going to play from again companions this is an aesthetic one core box Here's one of the expansions before. So, I mean, it's actually same priced as it was during the first one. So that's actually a good value. Again, adding another adventure, two things, new boss, new monsters, new heroes. So if you get one of these, it, are, you know, if you get both of the small of those, do you need the hero pack? Is it better to get one of those versus if you're going to get new heroes and new bad guys in that one versus just new heroes? Other expansion. This is another advanced expansion pack. Again, I mean... It's just adding more, more of these packs. How many of these packs do you need? More bad guys. And you could make an argument that I'd say probably, again, like with all of these campaigns, I would argue that the core, the core reprint, plus maybe the Apocalypse Adventures. So let's see. The 109 plus 95 you know, I'd say by far and away, that's your best value by far and away. I mean, that is true of almost all of these campaigns. Get the core of what they're offering. You're going to get the best bang for your buck regardless. And I think this holds true. So if you are looking at this and looking at it going, I'm not sure that is by far and away the easiest thing to do. That's most bang for your buck. It's the most content you're ever going to need because let's be honest, how many expansions do you have of things like this that you just never even get to? I have, I have tons. I'm speaking for myself. Now, the temptation, I won't lie, the temptation's there because, you know, having eight more heroes sounds really awesome for new classes because I love some of the alternative classes in this game. And same thing with uh, the monsters. You know, that is one of my biggest pet peeves in some of these dungeon crawl games. A little bit with Wild Ascent without the stretch goals was that, I mean, I just felt like there could have been a couple more. Same thing even with Deliverance, which I reviewed earlier in the year, where I felt there could have been a couple more minions to spice up the variety. When I see this, getting two more monsters with a new mini boss, you know, for 25 bucks, that's that's tough, you know? This is one of those where maybe I add that during the Pledge Manager instead. You know? Some of this other stuff, uh, you know, this is the stretch goal box. Something to think about. The build your own dungeon, something to think about, but again, not necessary. I'm not going to probably build my own dungeon, so I don't look at it needed from that side of things. But that is the sort of stylistic um, approach that you're going to be getting. And so this is something different than what's out there. And so I, I really think it's good from that side of things. I think it would be a very good fit for you. If you were looking for something that is the next step up from Zombicide or something of that ilk, this is the thing I think of, you know, you could do Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, you could do Cthulhu Meth Death May Die, which has, I think, probably the best one-off scenarios of any dungeon crawl-esque game that's out there of randomization, difficulty, and just dice chucking fun. But if you're looking for something with a campaign for ease of scaling, ease of play, now the rule book is thicker, but it's an easy read, and a lot of it is intuitive. I'd say this is the next step up, but again, the, the biggest barrier I'd say is the price. It's just more cost prohibitive than those other things that I mentioned, except if you're going to try and find the expansion or the uh, stretch goal box for Cthulhu that death may die, then, then, you know, price point for this might actually start to look good. Um, so that's something to be aware of, but I mean, it's, 
it's a good entry point from that side of things, I think. I think it really is with everything that it has. And I think that I would say that regardless of if they had sent me a copy or not. I mean, like full cards on the table. This is the sense of things I get from it, period. It's not going to be Gloomhaven in its decision making. It's not going to be Gloomhaven in its complexity. But I don't want everything to be that level of complexity. But there's a lot of other times I just don't feel like, you know, just pure dice chucking when it comes to zombie side. I mean, I want a little bit more than that sometimes too. And so I think this is a good balance. And I think that's also part of the reason why you're seeing so much support for it because there is a niche to be fitting in there because Simon has sort of dropped the ball a little bit in that way with their focus on zombie side and sort of shunting other stuff to the side. I mean, True Vang, we're still waiting for. Who knows? They redid that whole thing. And now they're doing Scooby-Doo and now they're doing Masters of Eternia, which are two different, completely other things, which is fine. But it's left a void for other things to fill. And that's why this is filling it because people are looking at this going, that's kind of cool. Because despite what you say, despite what you think about the tropes, despite what you hear some people say, this is the main theme that people love with this type of game. Period. High fantasy, high magic, high monsters. It's what sells the most. Period. You can argue that in the comments section with me, but that's what I believe. And if this addresses some of the shortcomings with having a deeper narrative, with having more variability in this, then it's probably going to be pretty freaking sweet. If, again, more items, more things to use in terms of the skill paths, it's addressing the issues of all of those, again, streamlined rules, what I was just talking about. If it's addressing all those issues, you can make the argument that, yes, it should have been in the base game. And you can make an argument, yes, that the production is too high in terms of cost because of the, the pandemic that has changed the global side of things on most hobby industries. But if you're looking for something like this, I don't think there's going to be a lot out there that I've seen that I really go, yeah, this looks pretty freaking sweet. Because you already know where the floor is with the first time around with the reviews that are out there. And you can see that if this is taking that floor and addressing all those issues that I just mentioned and making it better. That's great. So I think, I think it looks good. Now the question again is just the price point. You know, this thing is massive. That's such a big, I'd love to have one of those like just sitting on my shelf and I'd pay somebody to paint it. I think, um, again, hero content. I'd love to have some of these, this necromancer, uh, shaman, sword mage warlord oh that's some cool stuff um and some of these monsters right here the ice spirit i mean it, that's the cool stuff that i could go either way on that i would add during the pledge manager if i were doing this but it really drives home the question is this easy pay system again to circle back around to the beginning and go through all of the videos here someday i'll have videos on front pages like this there's a lot of videos um do you Look at that easy pay and say, this is enabling overspending and enabling FOMO in the hobby industry. Or is this enabling people who might not otherwise be able to get this, who are more price restricted to be able to fit in with some of the other people in the hobby and spread it out over time. And I, it just depends on how you want to look at it. I think it's interesting. I think because you're seeing something like this now, I think you have a good chance of seeing it again in the future. And we'll kind of see what comes of it. And we'll kind of see where it ends up. Is it going to get the last 48 hour push at the 1.6 already? Is it going to come closer to two with just over two days left? We'll see. I'm going to be watching. I'm backing right now. We'll see what it looks like at the end. So there you go. Whether or not this is right for you, you need to be aware. If you're interested in what the other dungeon crawlers that I compared this to, I'll put that link in the video above in the description below. So, okay, you know, because if this one is specific and this one is doing really good things in these areas, but if that's not what you're looking for, if you're looking for more of a storybook, if you're looking for more of a pure uh, PVP, there are other things to think about too, but that is the emphasis of this one in terms of its strengths that we talked about. So there you go. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was helpful. 
Hopefully it helped you. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. Have a great day. See you around.